Our last morphology topic is that of fruit morphology. Now, fruit, as it says in your notes, is a mature ovary and its associated parts. Some plants produce fruits, others do not. But what all fruits have in common is that they contain seeds. So fruits are the result of flowering. We'll start off with the fleshy fruits, of which there are various types. And first on the list are fruits known as a berry. And berries have a few to many seeds, and they're usually quite juicy. And a good example of a berry would be things like grapes or tomatoes. And tomatoes are indeed fruits. The next type of fleshy fruit has an unusual name, and it's called a Hesperidium. And it's characterized by numerous inner juice sacs. And this is one that is familiar to all of us in Florida as citrus. So limes, lemons, oranges, grapefruit, etc. fall under the category of Hesperidium type fruits. And then the final of the fleshy type fruits are referred to as pepos. And pepos develop below the petals and they develop typically a hard rind. Example of pepos would be things like various types of melons and also squashes. Like this zucchini. The next category of fruits are what we call semi or semi fleshy fruits. And as the name implies, they're not quite as juicy. They have a firmer flesh to them. And there are two main types. There are the droops, which are also known as stone fruits because they usually have a large, singular, very hard seed at the heart of the fruit. A classic example being peaches. Also plums, apricots, and cherries. The second type of semi-fleshy fruit is referred to as a pome. And you may have heard or be familiar with the fruit of pomegranates, which have become much more popular in recent years than they ever used to be. But what you're probably more familiar with as an example of a pome are apples. The next on the list are the dry fruits. And as their name implies, they're predominantly the seeds and the seed coatings, which are often dry and even hard. Examples of dry fruits would be things like beans, grains, and nuts. Peanuts, for example. And then finally, we have a relatively small group of plants that produce what we call aggregate fruits. And aggregate fruits have multiple seeds arising from several different ovaries within the fruit. Some of these are like an aggregate of berries, like raspberries for example, also blackberries. And an additional type of aggregate fruit is even more unusual in that instead of seeds within individual little berries in a cluster, it's one large berry with the seeds actually on the outer skin. And the example of that, of course, is strawberry. So this covers the main types of fruits. And again, fruits develop from the ovary walls predominantly once a flower has been pollinated. And as you might guess, because many of these fruits are very brightly colored, the main role of especially the sweet, fleshy, sugary fruits are to attract some type of animal to hopefully consume the fruit without completely destroying the seeds 
and carrying them away so that they can increase their population and increase the geographic distribution of the offspring from the plant.